We are going to go into the twilight zone now. We're going to actually create a procedure that creates and populates a temporary table. Then we're going to use another procedure that calls that procedure and can actually utilize that temporary table. So one procedure is going to call another procedure and we're going to utilize that in this example. This is going to be a real lesson. We're going to create two procedures. One's called temp1proc. And within temp1proc, we're going to execute another stored procedure called temp2. So we're going to create a temporary table called depth ag temp. It's got depth no and average salary. We're creating this temporary table in temp1proc. We're populating it in temp1proc. So now we've created the temporary table and we've inserted data into it. Then we're going to call another procedure called temp2proc. Hasn't been created yet, but watch this. When we say create procedure, I execute in parallel. This is created, but it gives us a warning. We haven't really resolved this temporary table because we haven't found the stored procedure temp2 yet. It's just a warning that says you need to create that before it's going to work. So now we're going to create a procedure called temp2proc and in there we're going to select all columns from the employee table and the average salary from our temporary table where the department numbers match. This will give us the ability to find who's making a salary greater than the average salary within their own department. So now we've created the second procedure that utilizes the temporary table that was created in the first procedure. That's the really clever piece of this. Now remember, this first procedure creates the temporary table and then calls the second procedure. And then the second procedure actually uses the temporary table that was created in the first procedure. You can do this. This is perfectly legal. So now we just execute the first procedure. It's going to call the second procedure, utilize that table, and all these folks are the people that made a salary greater than the average salary in their department. Beautiful. Now you're a pro. We're going to create a stored procedure next that pivots data. Here we're selecting the class code and getting the average grade point. And we see our four rows and we see that we're getting just the average grade point per class code. Now, let's create a stored procedure that will take this information and pivot it. It's very clever. So we'll say use SQL class. And now we're in the SQL class database as our default. Let's put this in a vertical group of Nexus so we can see both of these in action. So now, Here's our stored procedure. We're going to call it pivot example. This is how you pivot data using a stored procedure in SQL Server. So now I'm just going to select the class code and the grade point, no averages yet, putting into a student temp table. And now the temporary table has been created. Now I'll select everything from the temporary table called student temp. And here's where I'm going to pivot. I want the average grade point for the class code and this will put the order in freshman, sophomore, junior, senior and put it in pivot table. Now I create the procedure running it in parallel because I have a temporary table. That's done. Watch when I run the stored procedure pivot example. Here it comes. I've got the pivoting. There's my freshman same exact average. There's my sophomore, my junior, and my senior. But I've pivoted this and I control the order because it's freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. If you have questions, we have answers. Check out coughingdw.com for some great offers on our training books.
unleash the genius within.